girls. Thank you. I hope you had a great weekend. This is Gary Quackenbush here on the Word and Wealth. We're here every weekday to help you figure out what you need to know about your money. And we are talking about estate planning, will, trust, probate, trust administration, all kinds of things. And on the usually like on Mondays, we have a very special partner of the show that comes on, and that's Jim Robeson, who is the Medicare answer guy. He literally um has helped my sister and my brother-in-law to have their questions answered about Medicare. And the thing about Medicare is it's it seems simple, and then you start thinking about it, and it is not at all. It's very complicated. So I've got Jim with me today to talk about the ins and outs of Medicare. Jim, how are you doing today? Well, Jim is not an as of yet called in. Oh, so Jim, goodness. if you're listening to this fine radio show, uh, we're expecting your call. There we go. So Jim, because yeah, he's, so the, the thing with Jim, so his website is the Medicare guy.com. So that's kind of the easiest way to kind of get through things with Jim is the Medicare answer guy.com. And you can have your questions answered regarding that. There's a couple of different um, parts to Medicare that we're going to be working with. And that is, there's like this annual enrollment period. There's this other, you know, response period of time where, they, um, so it's the annual enrollment period, and then there's the initial enrollment period. And the initial and to talk about those enrollment periods, we have Jim Gary on the line with us right now. Excellent, Jim. How are you doing today? Good. It's been one heck of a season. I'll tell you what. All these enrollment periods, I'm even starting to get confused. You know. <laughs> When you, because we, you know, we were talking about the show and you go, okay, let's talk about the IEP and the AEP and the OEP and the SEP. And I went, Jim, stop. <laughs> but it's, well, because even when you say annual enrollment period, initial enrollment period, open enrollment period, special enrollment period, those are the things that we have you to help us with. Now, listeners, we do have lines open and Jim is happy to answer your questions on the air. The number is 888-344-1170, 888-344-1170. Call and ask your questions about Medicare. To get a hold of Jim directly, the easiest way is go to his website, which is the Medicare Answer Guy, the MedicareAnswerGuy.com, all one multi, the polysyllabic word, the MedicareAnswerGuy.com, or you can call on the show. Um, so, Jim, let's go through. I mean, we really need this. We're going into 2023. Um, there's there's a huge number of people that are turning 65 every year, like millions of people. It's just like this is a big, huge thing. And there's so much confusion. out there. There's these 800 numbers that say, you know, you got to call, put your aluminum hat on and call this 800 number and we're going to make things magic for you. And, you know, it's like you get sold this bill of goods and I have people calling me going, oh, my gosh, I thought I was doing this and I lost my doctor and they changed my I had no idea. So people do not know what they're doing. And that's why I'm glad we have you. So let's talk about these different annual initial open enrollment periods. Well, and thank you Gary, for having me back on. Um, it is confusing. And that's why I want to kind of front load this for next year. And there are a couple of different enrollment periods. We're just finishing now in two days on December 7th, the enrollment period called the annual enrollment period. And for those that have been on Medicare for a while, at least a year, they can change their Medicare Advantage plan, their prescription drug plan. There are a bunch of things they can do. Uh, but that ends in two days. Now, even before that, and probably more importantly uh, for our listeners, is the initial enrollment period. And that's an enrollment period when someone is just turning 65 for the first time, and literally 10,000 people a day across the United States are turning 65 every single day. Wow. And it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because us baby boomers for the next seven years is just going to get huge. Right now, there's 63 million people on Medicare. There'll be over 80 million. And uh, when you're turning 65, literally six months before you turn 65, you're going to start receiving these booklets from everybody under the sun, and they're going to pile up in your dining room. 
and you're going to start sweating because you, you're probably thinking you got to read all this stuff before you enroll. You don't, but it's important to know that if you're going to turn 65 next year, three months before you turn 65, the month of your birthday and three months after is when you can enroll in the government plan called Original Medicare. Okay. And you should do it sooner than later because it takes four to six weeks. And if you're coming off an employer plan or an individual plan, you don't want to be up against the wall um, in, in that situation. Okay. Uh, and that's, I think, the part that um, I'm finding people really get tripped up on because they go, okay, you know, my, I can't believe I'm 65 and it's going to be, it, you know, it's, it's it, by the end of the month, I'm just going to be this 65 year old person. What do I need to do? And, and I'm usually telling them, well, you know, first of all, I'm, I, I usually tell them, I don't want to talk about it. Talk to Jim because he knows. <laughs> Cause I mean, I, I get tripped up really bad on this stuff. And I know a lot of people do too. And well, Gary, I'm glad you guys are here to clarify these things, <laughs> you know, because people are confused. They might miss the deadline. Jim, I'm just curious, Noah here in the booth, if someone does miss that period and they are 65, are they pretty much up a creek until the following enrollment year? Well, that's a good question. And it depends because many people are turned 65, but they're going to continue to work. And if you're continuing to work, in some cases, if you work for a large company, you don't have to enroll in Medicare. However, if you're not going to continue to work and you miss those three months before, month of, and month of, and three months after, then you're going to miss that period and you will pay a late enrollment fee that gets very, very expensive. So it, it depends, Noah. Interesting. But on those, those are the things where we really don't get a lot of information about, okay, don't worry, you 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 know you're exempt. You don't have to worry about it because you're working for a big company. You're just going to be getting all this information about enroll, call us, do this thing immediately. And that's what I am troubled about. And that's why we have you. So if you guys are in this situation, literally you're turning 65 sometime this year, or you know mm -hmm. somebody that is a spouse or whatever, call Jim. Go to the Medicare the Medicare Answer Guy.com. You can see Jim watch his videos. He has got a bunch of free information there that's super helpful, and have him work through it with you to make sure you got your timelines and everything done correctly. You don't want to miss anything and have now, a penalty. Now, Gary, people, if you're turning 65, you're probably not going to miss this because, like I said, six months before you turn 65, you're going to start getting all kinds of mail. And, you know, yeah. unless you're asleep, you're, a minute. that's right. I'm turning 65. What am I supposed to do? Well, you can call the Medicare answer guy and I will let you know. Yes. And I, to me, that's a solution. If we have a solution, it's to call the Medicare answer guy. Um, you got Jim Robison, the Medicare answer guy. His number is 858-935-9120. That's the right number you want to give away, right? Yes, sir. So 858-935-9120. There's a couple other things besides the initial enrollment period. I think we talked about that a little bit. It, that's where you're going to get into the Medicare parts A and part B for the first time. You have the Medicare supplement with the PPOs, the Medicare Advantage with the HMOs and prescription plans. I think when we, um, the next thing we want to talk about, Jim, is a little bit about, you know, what do you get with Medicare? But I really want to go into the annual enrollment period because we have one that's ending like in two days that we really want to make sure that people are, are good with that. And then we'll talk about the open enrollment, which is now coming up within a couple of weeks. This is Gary Quackenbush with the Medicare Answer Guy, Jim Robeson, right here on The Word on Wealth. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the annual enrollment period. Coming up, The Word on Wealth. You've got questions. Perfectly timed. Hey, that was a good question, huh? On Wealth with go. Gary Quackenbush of GQ Law. Gary's here to give you peace of mind with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary to build, protect, and transfer your wealth. 855-500. So Cammie and I got our first. Um.
figure out how to resolve tax problems. You know, one thing we might be doing is setting up a payment plan or getting a collection delay, maybe getting a determination that the person shouldn't have to pay the taxes at all. We do offers and compromise. We do auto reconsiderations. And one of the things that's a really powerful tool that some people don't recognize is sometimes bankruptcy can be used to actually eliminate taxes when there's certain conditions of the code that are met. So we can do all kinds of things. After we analyze your situation, we can figure out what's available, discuss your options and figure out which ones to implement, what it's going to cost, how long it's going to take. And we can get people out from under all kinds of tax problems so they can sleep again. That's our goal. By the way, out of all of our media strategists here, um, Stacy is probably the best, just so you know. Trust. GQLaw.com. So I'm glad. or to talk with a member of the GQ team. That's GQLaw.com, 855-5. Back with you. Right. Welcome back at you. This is Gary Quackenbush and Jim Robeson, the Medicare Answer Guy, here with you on The Word on Wealth. I'm just so happy to have Jim partnering with me on this fine day so that we could talk about Medicare and things like that. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be on Medicare, but it's coming up, man. I am literally less than two years <laughs> I, that's the thing. Gary, I thought you were 37. You know, that's a long story, but I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I have kids that are older than that, Noah. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. No, that, so Jim, let, let's sort this out to the annual. Um, so the annual enrollment period was the one was October 15th through December 7th. Um, is there anything to be done in the next couple of days? Should people be kind of stressed, not stressed out, but should people be on the phone with you like, now saying, hey, Jim, I need to look at this? Well, they can. However, I'm not a golfer, but in the golfing world, there's such a thing as called a mulligan. You know what a mulligan is? I do. That's where you kind it's of go, a, oh, can I do that again? Do-over. Yeah. Yeah, it's a do-over. So the Medicare world has a mulligan, and it's called the open enrollment period from January 1st to March 31st. And if any of our listeners who are on a Medicare Advantage plan and wanted to change and they missed the December 7th of, uh, uh, last day, they get a mulligan. And starting January, February, and March, they can make one-time change to another from a Medicare Advantage to another Medicare Advantage plan. So uh, take a deep breath, and if you wanted to change from one of your carriers to another one or needed to talk to a broker uh, anytime after January 1st, you can call us, and, and, we, and we can take a look at that. Okay, um, So, uh, yeah, you, you, I mean, if you wanted your plan to start January 1st and you missed the December 7th deadline, you're going to have to wait until either February 1st, March 1st, or April 1st, but it can be done. You get a mulligan. The other and the last enrollment period is called special. And special enrollment period, a, a number of different things, but primarily one thing that I wanted to focus on, Gary, is if you turn 65 but you're still working and you work for a company that is over 20 employees, that's important, and you didn't enroll in Medicare, and now you know you're going to retire early, 
And what I'm reading in the economic world is there's going to be a lot of layoffs and a lot of people who are listening that thought they were going to work for another couple of years, but they may not be able to. Now you have what's called a special enrollment period where if you know you're going to retire June 1st, March 1st, July 1st, whatever, you need to get in touch with a broker like myself or some of you know who can help you enroll in Part A and or B of the government plan, and you have to do this six weeks before you retire. So there's kind of a timeline there. That's called a special enrollment period. Uh, <clears throat> when you can come off your employer plan onto a Medicare health plan. The other big thing is, let's say you're moving um, out, of San, out of California, like literally thousands of people, and you're going to Tennessee, Texas, and whatever. That's a special enrollment period. So wherever you're going, you can change, if you need to, your Medicare, uh, your Medicare health plan. There are those that qualify for Medi-Cal and Medicare. And so they would have a special enrollment period really three or four times a year where they can change their plans. But I think the biggest thing that, that, that we're going to see in the next six months to 12 months, personal opinion, is there are going to be a lot of people who thought they were going to continue work past 65, and now that that's all coming to an end. So we would be happy to help you if that's your situation. Uh, transition from your employer plan onto Medicare. Okay. So this is the Medicare answer guy to get your questions answered on this. Call Jim, Jim Robeson, and he, find him at the, the Medicare answer guy.com. His number is 858-935-9120. The Medicare answer. Now I have a story, Gary. Yes, I sir. have a story. Okay. I met, met with a gal this morning. Dear lady, <clears throat> She's on a Medicare Advantage plan, and she was enrolled uh, either a year or two ago. And, of course, with Medicare Advantage plans, you have to stay within a certain medical group, whether it's Sharp, Scripps, Kaiser, UCSD. Well, she's a little <clears throat> on in her age, and she had a serious medical issue, and she forgot, as best as I could assess, that she had to stay within the network. And she went outside the network and uh, found out that her plan that she was on, the doctor wasn't going to be covered. And she needs this surgery coming up in, in the next month. So she was referred to me but by one of my clients. We sat down with her this morning and tried to understand where she is and what she needs to accomplish. And we were able to kind of come into it backwards where we started with a, a, a surgeon that's in her group, in her plan, and we had to find a primary that would be able to refer her to the surgeon for the surgery because right now that just wasn't working. And you could literally see in her face that, of course, this is confusing. This is a serious illness. She needs surgery. And fortunately, with you know my associate, we were to figure this thing out, and we still have some questions that need to be answered. But this is the type of thing that you can run into, especially if you don't have a broker. And there's no way you're going to call an insurance company and uh, in some cases uh, really get a, possibly get a straight answer. So fortunately, I think she's out of the woods. It's just a matter of, you know, crossing some T's and dotting some I's. Those are the type of questions people have. And it's going to even, it's going to get busier and busier and more complex. And that's where I, we're here to help. Well, you know, I, I am a big subscriber to that. People need to have their professionals advising them to do things. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do my own dentistry. I wouldn't do my own doctor work. I, you know, I kind of play doctor with my injuries and cuts and bruises and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'll even call, I even have a sister who's been a nurse for 40 years and I'll call her and she'll say, um, you know, you can do this or that, but I think you should just go see your primary care physician because this is something it's going to be, you know, it's going to be up to her to decide what to do. But um, the thing with the professionals 
is when you get stuck and you're trying to do it on your own, that's where you get really, really in trouble. I am always, I mean, I know there's a lot of commercials on TV, like for, like for car insurance, like you can do it yourself. Call this number. You're going to be, you're going to save uh -huh. 15%. There's going to be a lizard that will answer the phone and you're going to get a special uh -huh. deal and a special price. And what I'm finding is that those organizations don't look at the whole picture. They just go, oh, you want car insurance? What are the limits you want? Click it in here, click this button, put in your credit card. Okay, great. You got super cheap insurance, but they don't look at the fact that, you know, what about other things? Do you own a home? Do you own a business? Do you have life insurance? Do you have children? Do you have other liabilities? What's your home worth? How much is your home insured for? Do you have an umbrella? I mean, there's a hundred different things that it used to be when I was first got my car insurance, the guy asked me like 50 different questions. And I'm, you know, he, cause this whole thing was, I want to know everything about you and make sure you are totally 100% secure in your insurance. And we get this now with, you know, with, with our Medi-Cal and Medicare stuff, and we don't pay attention. We just think, oh, well, I'll call this number because they promised me it's going to be faster, cheaper, easier, but it's not true. You know, when my dad ran into situations with it, it was the same thing. It's like, well, who do you call? Well, where did you get your insurance? Well, I called an 800 number. I said, well, good luck with that because they just mm -hmm. sold you a product. I'm not saying it's a bad product, but how are you going to go now and figure out, you know, what you're talking about? I personally have an insurance broker who I absolutely love for my car insurance, home insurance, business insurance. It's all, and and for, from six or eight different companies, it's one broker and we call them and mm -hmm. it's like night and day. Oh, well, that's going to be covered under your business policy. Oh, that's going to be covered under your, and then they have all the connections. So it's like, you guys, what I'm telling you is that's why you get Jim Robeson. You don't need somebody else, but you need somebody. And if you don't already have your you know, favorite person that you really love, call Jim, the Medicare answer guy. He's been doing this for a very long time. He knows all the ins and outs. And you get these special situations where you think, well, that's not going to be me. Baloney. You don't know that. But when it is you, you want to make sure you have the right person. And it doesn't cost you any more. It's a matter of this is just you get the guy that will actually be able to help you out. That's Jim Robeson. One final thought. Yes, and sir. thank you for that. Welcome. The medical groups in San Diego, really across the United States, are in turmoil. And I say that sincerely. And I, here's what I mean. When Obamacare uh, came into being back in 2013, 2014, all of these groups, they, their, their patient load doubled and tripled and quadrupled. Then we went into the pandemic and nobody could see the doctor. And now what's happening is doctors are retiring, they're quitting, you can't get enough nurses. And now primary care doctors, this is especially for Medicare uh, Advantage plans, you can't access. So if you're going to change from one plan to another, you're probably going to find, doesn't matter if it's Sharp, Scripps, UCSD, uh, sometimes Kaiser, it's, you're going to find fewer and fewer primary care doctors that are accepting new patients. All the more reason About two minutes. Okay, who can go behind the scenes and help you navigate that because that's the biggest stressor in, in changing plans. I want to keep my own doctor. I want somebody who's got a good bedside manner and just won't treat me like, you know, throw me under the bus. 100%. I mean, my doctor, I, I have Kaiser. I love Kaiser. I've had them for a very, very long time, probably 35 years or more, maybe closer to 40. And I, I'm fine with them. Some people don't like them. I, I really like Kaiser. It's been great. But my doctor mm -hmm. retired and it was insane. I now was looking for another uh -huh. primary care physician and it's like accepting new patients. No, 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 no. Yep. Even in the Kaiser system. And I was, I was getting worried. And then I was looking for a surgery. Yeah. You know, I had to have a surgery and it was like, I knew what kind of surgery. So I'm looking for doctors. I'm asking nurses, I'm asking friends. And it's like, is this person accepting new patients? No, 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 no. So the only way I could do it was the same thing. One. I had to go kind of behind the scenes and try to figure it out differently. You guys, I cannot recommend Jim Robeson any higher than I do. Jim Robeson, the Medicare answer guy. Any questions regarding Medicare, if it's coming up, if you're coming up on 65, if you already are and you want to switch your plans, you know, we have the annual enroll, the open enrollment coming up January 1st. You have the annual enrollment that's ending December 7th. Um, you got the special enrollment. These are things. Who cares what they really are? You don't even need to know. You just need to call Jim, right? I mean, why would you want to? It's like, you know, I'm touting all the time. You don't have to understand every little nuance and know all the rules. You get somebody that's doing it for a living 
and Jim, it doesn't cost you more money to go to Jim. That's the thing. Um, he's all that is taken care of when you purchase and when you do, you know, you get your plans and switching. So call Jim, the Medicare answer guy. You can look on his website. He's got some great videos that help you out with that stuff. Jim, I really appreciate you being a partner in the show, man, helping us manage our health care and our Medicare. Jim Robeson, the Medicare answer guy. Thanks, Jim, for being on today. Talk to you next time. Thank you, Gary. Have a good week. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know where to find answers you can trust when you need them. Welcome to the Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush. We're here to help you build, protect, and transfer everything you've worked hard for with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary and the team at GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. GQ Law. You're live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for being along today. Really, um, I appreciate you being a, a listener to the show. I appreciate the many of my listeners that have come in to see me. Um, I appreciate having people like Jim Robeson, who really helps me to understand the ins and outs of the Medicare world because. Um, as I come up on that, I know it's going to be something that I have to deal with. And it's well, even just, me, Gary, it's and you know, I got a, I got a ways to go, but it's like, I want to know this stuff now so that when I do hit the, the you know, like this, the, the 60 year mark, I already know what's coming my way. And that, and a lot of that too, Noah, is it also helps you figure out, you know, if you, if you're voting, if you're doing anything that's kind of, you know, going to help you control, you know, what's going on with society or the, you know, economy or anything like that, you'd understand, you know, we, cause we just don't understand Medicare. We think, oh, okay, well, Medicare, you just, when does that apply? Well, it applies at 65. And what do you get? Well, you get A and B. Well, what if I don't want B? Well, you're going to be charged more if you get B later than you, than sooner than later. It's like, what, how does that happen? There's just a yeah, lot of- so much more complex than people think. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of penalties and controls to make you comply with the system, which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just if with your lack of understanding it is government provided health care which we always think oh we don't have government health care really <laughs> what what yeah, rock you are you under man you know we have and it's not as even before obamacare we have medicare when you're 65 
that's, you know, like with me, what will happen is I have a Kaiser premium. I am self-employed. Well, I own the company that I work for and my, and, and, you know, and I've, you know, a bunch of people that work for me, but I have to pay for my own health insurance. And it's, you know, with me at my age, I'm paying over $2,000 a month. It's crazy. So when people go, oh, my premium is $300 a month, I go, oh, that's so sad. Well, mine's over 2000 so what will happen to me is when I get to a point when I'm 65 and I can go on Medi-Cal, then that premium goes away because now that's covered by Medi-Cal. Okay, so how does it benefit me? That's a lot of money. It's a huge amount of money. But then I'm going to pay, I'm going to, you know, I have to supplement that. I'm going to get, you know, a B supplement and then I'm going to have Kaiser still, which I have now, but I don't have to pay the direct premium. Instead, I pay these, you know, these different other plans. You know, the, there's other premiums, but it's not the 2000. So, it, you know, that's part of it. I look at it as well. You know, when I retire, I will have X amount of money in Social Security. And you go, well, it's not enough to live on. I go, well, but wait a minute. My, my health insurance is probably going to drop by about $1,000 a month or 1500 a month. Add that to Social Security. That's really good money. So, yeah, we do have a retirement system. It does exist. You know, is government, you know, is it government health care? Well, no, but it's largely supplemented by it because I've been paying taxes since I was 18 years old. And I've been, you know, I've been working for a very, very long time. I put in, I put into the system, I paid my premiums, and now I get to take advantage of that. But untangling that, it's just, it's too tough. And I, I think even if you could watch a YouTube video and say, I can do this myself, I just, you know, the example that Jim was giving about helping this woman who needs a surgery and but she's in the process of a switch of Medi-Cal plans or Medicare plans. And now they're saying, well, your your doctor, you know, you can't use that doctor. You know, there's different ways to get around that, but it's not by calling any, you know, just like any direct 800 number or calling, you know, going on to a chat line and you know, somebody chats with you and says, Oh, here's how you do it. It just it takes some real skill. And what I'm trying to emphasize is that you, you look at Jim and go, well, Jim, how do you get paid? Do I pay you, write you a check? And he's, and no, when he gets you in a plan, then he gets paid because of that. So it's not like, you know, you're going and writing checks for thousands of dollars. It's Jim gets paid a different way. Um, and it's, which is why it just shows he genuinely wants to help people get this the right way. Absolutely. And he's been, you know, and he's still, he just, he's very kind. I mean, everybody, you can hear him. He's very kind. He's very smart. Um, and, you know, he's like, let's do a review. And that's why he's on the radio. It's like, you no, know, how many people do that? Nobody except for Jim. So we're glad he's a partner. Well, Jim's a lot like you. Yes, you guys get paid for it. Otherwise, you know, you probably wouldn't be doing it, right. but it's more about for the, for the two of you. And I would say just about everybody on this show, helping people understand the area of expertise that you have so that they can get it done the right way. And it benefits them and their families. Exactly. Yep. hundred percent. That's what the word on wealth exists for to help. And speaking of which, if you want help with your estate planning, your wills, trust, power of attorneys, or trying to figure out your distributions you're going to be getting. Maybe you're reading your mom and dad's will or trust, and there's something in there that just bugs you. And it may be language that seems kind of awkward, or you start to look at it and go, wait a minute, I think I understand this, but this doesn't really make sense to me. This is this shouldn't be that way. What I find quite often, um, because I end up, I guess I attract problems because if there's no problem, why do you need a lawyer, right? Um, you still need one, by the way. But I will find and talk to people about problems they've had because they get mom's trust and they read through it and they go, oh my, mom's trust said that when dad died, she was supposed to create a, a different trust and she was supposed to transfer property and dad's separate property, which he did have some, that was supposed to be put into a B trust. And I don't know what that means. It's a decedent's trust. It's a bypass trust. What is all that? And you start to look through the document and go, Mom, did you do any of this? To which I ask that question all the time of clients. And they say, no, what was I supposed to do? I go, well, yeah, you're supposed to do this. So I, you know, if you're reading your parents' trust, whether they're alive or not, and you're looking at it and go, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why should this happen? Let's talk about it. 
Uh, so do you be- think, Gary, that like, so, uh, you know, when a husband and wife are getting all this stuff together for their trusts and all that, mm-hmm. uh, that let's say, you know, it's the husband that passes away, that the wife didn't even know that some of the stuff was in there and she was supposed to do X, Y, and Z. They don't. You're, you're absolutely spot on, Noah. People don't realize that they, you know, your husband passes away and then you don't think, well, I'm going to read the trust and see what happens. Um, some people will, um, but I think more more often than not, people just don't. You know, if it's a blended family situation, you're going to get people reading the will, you know, during the funeral. Uh, there's sometimes people really into that thing, but uh, for the most part, I think people don't. They don't read and they they just don't want to think about it. And then nothing, nobody brings it up. I mean, you don't get communication from somebody saying, hey, you for you forgot to read your trust and there's some requirement. Um People just what would your know. opinion be? I, in my mind, as, as an outsider, a guy that's not in the industry, it seems like that would be at least the first step to understanding exactly what's going on. Hey, if you're a wife, read the trust that you and your husband created and vice versa. The thing with, um, I would agree. I mean, I think you, if it's your parents' trust, if they'll let you read it, read it. Um, if mom or dad, if either one has, either, either one has passed away, then I would say, read through the trust um if it's not a kid that's reading the trust if it's you know the the surviving spouse read through the trust and if you if you don't understand it then it's either the trust was written too complicated which means you probably need somebody to help you interpret it um or it's just that you know that's just the way it is i mean sometimes you read stuff you don't know whether it's important if you're reading through a document like a legal document some of the stuff that you don't understand is not important it's not stuff that would change anything it's just it's just language we put in documents because it needs to be there just in case there's a challenge or there's some you know, some failure with the trust or it ha- you know we have to have some specific language to kind of resurrect a failed portion things like that but i would say people need to read their own trust um, they need to review it every five years. Uh, you, If your parents will let you read theirs, read through it. And if you have questions, give me a call. I mean, I review trust all the time. You can call me, 855-500-TRUST, 855-500-TRUST. If it's a trust you've done in the last year or two, then go you know, talk to the person who put it together for you if you still trust them. Um, but it's like, I don't usually... Um, I don't usually see people doing that. You know, if they put together a trust in the last, you know, a year, they usually don't come to me and say, "Hey, Gary, I, I did this uh, online trust for, you know, and I want you to review it and tell me whether it's perfect and that kind of thing." It's like, eh, let's let's let, let me ask you. Do you even recommend because because you do see ads for a lot of those free services? Hey, do like, your your trust for free online? Are those beneficial at all? Um, they are for, you know, for some people it, it works out, you know, if they, if you kind of have a, have a knack for legal terms, if you have kind of a knack for you know, doing it on your own, um, I, my thing with doing it yourself is if you do it yourself, then you are your own advisor. And if you have a problem or a question, where do you go? You, you can't go back to the company that, you know, the download company where you downloaded the form. I mean, people get that with their, you know, tax software, you go and buy TurboTax and along with it, you know, the bonus, if you pay an extra, you know, $3, they give you, you know, this um, family trust maker. And when you put that together, I mean, I have that software. I don't use it because I think it's not very good. In fact, I think it's awful, Uh, but the terminology, they use so much terminology. I've had people, you know, we found out after they passed away, they used this self-help software and they got the terminology backwards. I mean, we had one where, I, I believe the guy probably thought he was doing a good job, but what ended up happening is he got the language backwards and what and and, and the trust literally unfunded itself by, by a distribution early in the trust where it gave all the property out to his estate. And then later on the distribution, it, you know, it distributed whatever was in the trust, which was nothing. So we had to go to court to show that um, it was a misinterpretation. He didn't really mean for the trust to hold his property until he died and then transfer it all back to his estate because that would require probate. But we had to go through probate court to show that it was not supposed to go through probate court because it was just written wrong. And the guy, he did it himself and he just didn't know what he was doing. So, but I have... Um, Coming up next, I have a, I'm going to call the parable of the countertop. We're going to talk about DIY stuff right here on The Word on Well with Gary Quackenbush. You've got questions. We've got answers. This is The Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush of G. You're like, and that's even something that we could do it where it's.
not alone. Ask for the legal help you need. Call Gary and the team at GQ Law, 855-500-TRUST. Or go online and download Gary's free eBooks and videos. Read Gary's blogs. Call or click to request your free consultation or to talk with a member of the GQ team. That's GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. Your life. Hey, welcome back to the Word on Wealth. <clears throat> Not that you ever left, because we are still here. Um, we, we are talking about um, whether <clears throat> it's a good idea to do things yourself. I mean, you. I mean, I'm I'm a tax attorney. Uh, my firm for years has done tax preparation, and um, you know, one of the things I I always hesitate when people say, "Oh, I want you to review my tax return. I just did it on TurboTax." It's like, oh my goodness, okay, we got to go through that again because TurboTax, you know, if you put junk in, it it'll put junk out. You know, if you, it'll show you how much is due. You up in the right hand corner, you know, oh, you owe X amount of tax, and then you start to add these numbers and go, "Wow, that number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller." And people start to add in numbers where they shouldn't go, or making things up, or exaggerating just to try to get that tax number down. And I, I think it almost encourages you to. Uh, to to improperly prepare a return. But <clears throat> so do, do it yourself stuff, DIY stuff happens all the time. We're kind of into that. I can watch a video and do everything myself if I want. But when you deal with estate planning, um, I always think it as, you know, okay, should I do my own living trust? Well, I did my own because I'm a lawyer that does living trust, but should you do your own living trust? So that always brings up what I call the parable of the countertop. <clears throat> My dad was always really good at putting things together. Um, we had um, you know, a kind of a, a shop, if you will, in the garage, and we liked to build things. And sometimes we'd build a cabinet or we built a little playhouse. It was, you know, like a 10 by 12 playhouse. And and he was really good at that kind of thing. He was very creative. We did an addition on our home by ourselves. Um, and I, I look at it now because I was in the construction industry after that and realized, wow, we really messed a lot of stuff up and we could have done so much better. It would have been warmer. It would have been safer. It would have looked better if we had the right people doing it. But one of the things we had done is we had made some cabinets and we were going to put a countertop on them and we wanted to use this new plastic stuff. This was a long time ago called Corian. And it's a hard plastic. You can get different colors and, you know, kind of different designs and stuff like that. And I, and, and so we got the cabinets done. I said, all right, let's go get the Corian. And dad said, no, we're not going to get the Corian. We're going to hire somebody to put the Corian on. I thought that was, seemed to me, that was kind of silly. If we're doing the work ourselves, let's just go buy the sheet of Corian. We could do it. We could you know, use the router and we can sand and do everything and get it all perfect. And he said, no, he said, Corian is very expensive. So you buy one sheet of Corian. Okay, you have to mark it all out perfectly, the hole for the sink and the knobs and the shape of the backsplash and the countertop and everything like that. And he said, and if you, so if you buy that sheet and we mess it up or break it, which is a possibility if you mishandle it because it's, it's really kind of rigid. If you break it, he says, Gary, what do you do? I said, well, glue it back together. He says, no, what would you do? I said, well, we'd go get another piece of Corian. He says, yeah, we go back to the store and get another piece of expensive Corian and try it again. But if we hire somebody, that is their responsibility. So they come in, they know how to handle it. They know how to install it perfectly. They get all the holes cut for the sink and the faucets and get it all set up in the backsplash and they glue it in place and put it in place and it's all beautiful done. What if they break it? My dad asked. To which I responded, well, if they break it, they get to go back to the store and buy a new piece of Corian and install it. And he said, bingo. And they're going to pay for that because I paid for them to put in a piece of Corian on my countertops. So that's the parable of the countertop. It was like, literally, if you have a professional do it, they're supposed to do it right. If they break it, if they do it wrong, they fix it on their dime. So that was my dad's thing is that something that made a difference get a professional with estate planning, with a living trust. They're not that simple. I mean, the concept is simple. I mean, when I draw it out for clients, I draw, you know, little boxes and little stick people and I show exactly how it works. So you understand the mechanics of it. The trust documentation is where it gets a little bit technical. Now, this is kind of a ridiculous example. It is an absolutely true example, but it sounds kind of ridiculous. Um, this was enough years ago, 
clients long gone. Um, and, and, and so basically what happened is this guy bought software. He bought a software package. This was back when computer programs came on, um, on um, CDs. So he bought this CD and it was a do it yourself will and trust package. Okay. So it had a will, it had a living trust, it had a financial power of attorney, it had a healthcare power of attorney, and it had um, some other documents. Well, he noticed that the will had the person's names on it and said all this stuff, and then it was signed by the person at the end. And then he noticed that the trust introduced the name of the trust, you know, talked about people. And then at the end of the document, it had a signature and a notary. Okay, then he noticed there was a power of attorney and it was this power of attorney talking about money, all that kind of stuff. And it gets to the end and it has a notarized signature. And then the other document was healthcare power of attorney. And the healthcare power of attorney has a different language. It gets to the end. And guess what there's there? There is a notary signature. So he thought, well, that is stupid. Witness the will, notarize the trust, notarize the uh, healthcare power of attorney, notarize the financial, but they all say the same thing. So he decided to simplify and made one long document. I know it sounds dumb. It sounds ridiculous, but that's exactly what he did. He had the trust. And then before the signature page, he inserted all the, the will language. And before the signature page, he inserted the power of attorney language. And before the end of that power of attorney, he, in, he inserted the healthcare power of attorney. Um, and he combined some of the, health, the, the power of attorney language together all at the very end of the document. Then he had it signed and notarized. Okay, and, and then we were dealing with it because the guy had died. And now the kids were bringing this document to me going, we have no idea what this document is. And it took me a while to figure out what the heck happened. And we figured out it really was dad downloaded or I got, you know, purchased this software package and thought he was, you know, smarter than the software package, dumb software package, and just combined it all into one document. Hey, it's cheaper. You only have to sign it once. You got one notary, save you, you know, back then it would save you 10 bucks, you know, or if you had four notaries, it would have saved you 30 bucks. So I figured, yeah, I'm going to save some money. I'm going to do it right. What happened is, first of all, the healthcare power of attorney and the financial power of attorney cannot be on the same document, nor can they have the same witnesses. They are different documents because they have different disclosures. So they canceled each other out, made them so they're, neither of them were valid. Then you have the will and the trust that were stuck together and the language is completely different. The will needs to be witnessed by two people and they have to witness to the capacity, You know, the guy is of sound mind or the gal is of sound mind that's part of the witnessing process. Well, the wills were not signed by the witnesses witnessing that these people were of sound mind. The trust needed to be notarized independently where the people signing it saying, I am the trustee of this trust and I agree to administer the trust as outlined. And the other one is I am the creator or trustor of this trust. I created it with my intention and it expresses my intention signed under the penalty of perjury. So none of that was done until the very end. Well, we ended up going to court. We picked it all apart. You know, we're talking, you know, gobs of hours later, we sorted it all out, showed the judge exactly what we think was supposed to happen. We got a court order, stripping all the things apart, making the will a pour of a will, putting the trust back to where it was supposed to be to make it a trust. We had no opposition to it, luckily. So it wasn't like a huge big deal. We had a big fight. So, you know, six months later, we got an order from the probate court saying, go ahead and use the trust. Six months of attorney's fees was very, very expensive. So did dad save money by doing it himself? Nope. He cost you guys probably $7,000 in attorney's fees. That's all. That's what it costs. So it was this, this outrageous amount of time and energy. Not that he was doing his best. I mean, he probably didn't want to pay a lawyer. He probably couldn't find a lawyer. He probably hated talking to lawyers. He probably was having lawyers try to talk him into all kinds of things. I don't know. People don't like lawyers. I get it. I'm an attorney. Um, you know, people resist, you know, they don't want to hear my advice or they don't want to talk to me and they think all the lawyer jokes are true. Well, about some of the attorneys it is, but not about us. I would be happy to help you with all this. If you have a trust like that, that you're thinking of sticking it all together. I mean, let me talk you out of it, but I'm happy to help. 855-500-TRUST. It's really important to get your trust documents right. So call me 855-500-TRUST. Why is it important to get it right? The number one reason it's important to get it right 
is because the person who authored two minutes the documents, the person who you know put the plan together, you will not be here to be able to clarify anything. So if the documents are not clear what you wanted, that's up to the right legal standard. We're in California, guys. We don't mess with the law stuff here. Um, if the person that put it all together, it doesn't do it right, they are not here to tell us what they meant. They're not here to say, oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I meant this. So it's got to be done right. And it's not just this big, long list of give the table to Sally and the chair to this. It, that's not what a trust is. The trust is a document that functions while you are alive. It functions once you pass away. It's something that will handle your case during disability. It'll handle your money during disability. It'll handle your money after you pass away. It'll take care of minor children. It'll hold money and trust until the kids are you know, 25, 30, 35, 55, whatever you want. We can craft a trust that will set up a retirement account type thing for your kids. I mean, all these things are possible if the trust is done right. It's worth the money. Most of my clients... Like almost every one of my clients will tell me it costs less than they thought. It was easier than they thought as far as the amount of time and energy they had to put in as far as putting paperwork and stuff together. And it was faster than they thought. We are still on a two-week turnaround, guys. Um, you, to get it in before Christmas, if you get us in, get it in now. We can get you done before Christmas, 855-500-TRUST. If you think the coolest thing ever would be to buy a trust package for your kid who has a child, <laughs> call us, 855-500-TRUST. We have deals where we can work it out where you pay and we can set a trust package up and you know, basically a coupon for your child. They get it for Christmas and they go, wow, this is cool. Now what? They come and see me. We flesh it out with their own personal details. Thanks for being along today on The Word on Wealth. Call Jim Robeson for your Medicare, MedicareAnswerGuy.com. Tell a friend about the Word on Wealth featured since 1995 with financial solutions attorney Gary Quackenbush, an expert in estate planning, wills and trusts, and tax problem solving. Gary is past president of the California Society of Tax Consultants. Reach out to us. The Word on Wealth team of financial experts is here to answer your questions and help you preserve your family's financial future. <laughs> The information you hear on The Word on Wealth is for general information purposes only. This program discusses general financial and legal topics. Seek legal advice from a competent lawyer for your individual